Hey guys, what's well, so welcome to another video of mine, it's double A, and this is your review of the Premier League match which took place between Fulham and Chelsea, which ended 2 1 2 Chelsea in the South West London derby. And um, wow, few, few, what a relief! The main, the main, you know, important factor is we got the three points, that's all I care about, that's all we fans cared about. We're in that top four pack, we're in the top four race, we still have that one game in hand. And we did the job. We just got the three points. We didn't bottle it, thank God for that, because that was nervous. And we made hard work of that. We didn't have to. We simply didn't have to. We just made hard work of it. We could have put the game to bed in the first half. Poor, poor finishing. We weren't clean the court whatsoever. And it only cost us in the dying seconds of the game. Now, obviously, with it before, you know, Delve into the game, you know, depth into the tactics and analysis. Let me go over the lineup. So, Kepa Arifa Balaga did. Uh, come back into uh, the number one spot in the keeper position now. So already confirmed that you know he was going to definitely play in one of the next two matches. So we we weren't really sure as to if he was going to play, but he did play. And pff, I'll get into a minute, but pff, Kepa, wow. Um, as for Guetta, Emerson's the fullbacks. Uh, Antonio Rodriguez and Christensen uh, getting into the spot, giving you know David Luiz a well deserved um, a well deserved break, a rest because obviously he was suffering from fatigue. And then the um, the free midfield of uh, Ingola Kante, Jorginho and uh, Ross Barkley is in number eight, the left centre mid position. You then got the uh, two wingers of Eden Hazard and William with Higuain as the starting striker, the number nine. And that was our lineup. Now I thought, you know, decent lineup. I was disappointed not to see Ruben or Callum Hotsadoy playing, but, you know, we'll get into that in a minute. And um, yeah, we had a fiery start. We were fantastic. We came out the blocks. The intensity was high. We pressured our, pressurised them very well as well. And. Um, I must say one thing, I need to mention one thing, is um, I can see why Fulham have conceded the most amount of goals in the Premier League this season. They're defensively, they're atrocious. They weren't getting close to their man. They weren't getting close to Hazard or Higuain. Higuain's movement was phenomenal. The front three, they had so much room, so much ability. And if it wasn't for our, if our finishing was even half decent, we would have put these lot to bed within the first 20 minutes. I mean, Higuain had a glorious chance where... A cross was whipped in by Hazard and Higuain, a glancing head just goes wide. He had four opportunities, four beautiful opportunities. He got one of them, he put one of them away. A beautiful finish, Aspi finally getting a perfect clinical one-touch cross and Higuain with a poacher's finish into the back of the net, 1-0. And this is where I think, you know, when we went 1-0, I thought the game would ease about, Fulham would have to come out of the blocks, we'd then pick them apart slowly, carve them open, because defensively they're really, really poor. You know, they leave a lot of open gaps. Um, the way that Hazard and William were operating those half spaces between the lines, it was very, very simple. And they weren't really getting close to the amount of closing down any, any of our players. So it was very routine in the first half. The first half was phenomenal. We were fantastic. Um, and they were really unfortunate to concede the equaliser from Callum Chambers. Now, but prior to that, a fantastic world class save by Kepa for Balaga. Mitrovic, a half, uh, you know, side volley. Beautiful save by Kepa. He parries out for a corner. But what do defenders do? What they do... Are they going to repay him by a biz ball marking? Callum Chambers is arm marked around the back post and he volleys it home. 1 1. The Cra Craven Cottage goes ballistic and it's back to square one. But then Jorginho out of nowhere. The ball comes along. Jorginho nicks it from one of their black things, Tom Kearney. He then runs along, gives it to Hazard. Hazard then switches it back to him just outside the 18 yard box and he finesses one 20 yarder. He plummets into a top corner and I'm in shock. I mean, beautiful goal and ballistic. We go straight back into the lead. We sink for them. And we should have scored more. I was really disappointed that it was two and a half time. I thought they, you know, it flattered for them because technically we're up to speed. You know, the play, everyone you didn't really put a foot wrong. Like I said, the way they were operating those hard spaces between the lines, the way Higuain's movement was causing a lot of trouble for that um, Fulham's back two, and the way the midfield was, was really good. Jorginho dictating the play, Kante just being Kante, and the way that our play on the left hand side was much more quick. If you compare to it, compare it to Alonso, Emerson is much more rapid. The way the ball was flying through the left hand side, they link up with Hazard, Higuain in the midfield is fantastic. Ross Barkley having a disappointing game yet again. And I was really, really disappointed. He had an average game, you know, again, passing sideways, backwards, not really going forwards. I would have loved to see Ruben play, but he did come on uh, later on in the game. That's half time. The second half does begin. And um, this is where Fulham come out of the blocks. Now, we had an abysmal second half. I'll be honest. We had an abysmal second half. I thought we'd be able to put the game to bed early in second half, but we didn't. Fulham came chance after chance, setting on causing so many problems on the right hand side. And uh, Tom Kearney as well. Uh, causing a lot of trouble and you know fatigue starting to kick in tiredness we had two massive games 
uh, were quite knackered. And Kepa to the rescue. For me, Kepa was a man of the match. Outstanding performance. The way he pulled off, I can recall three to four world-class saves which kept in the game. The one in the first half, the three in the second half, the one right at the end where Mitrovic gets literally a free header from six yards the way Kepa saves it. Phenomenal, world-class. If that was the Hayer, documentaries would be made. And um, no, for me, Kepa was a man of the match, 100%. Um, beautiful. If it weren't for him, we wouldn't have won this game. I'm surprised when he's saying that we shouldn't be struggling against Fulham. We should be wrapping up the three points. We should be comfortably beating these lot. But unfortunately, we didn't come to beat them. But we got the three points. That's the main thing. And we move on. But um, like I said, um, in the second half, they kept coming on. They did score an offside goal in the dying seconds. And like I said, because of our poor finishing, the fact that we weren't clinical... It's um, it nearly cost us in the dying seconds of the game. Now, obviously, if you look at the league table, we've can, we've scored the least amount of goals outside the top six, in with inside the top six, and it's by a mile. I mean, we've sc we've scored forty nine goals this season, and then the fifth, and we're the sixth best in in the league. The fifth best is Tottenham, and they're eight goals ahead. So, you know, we we're really lacking goals. We're not clinical. When you look at examples such as Manchester City, Liverpool, the way they press on the counter attack, so they get pressed, they pressurise, they rapidly go on the counter, they counter in numbers and numbers, and and they're deadly, lethal finishing, clinical, and they put teams to bed. We can't seem to be doing that. We always give other other teams other teams an opportunity to um, but to basically get back in the game. It's it's ridiculous. Um, and it's going to cost us, it's already cost us a season, the fact that we haven't been able to finish our dinner or that we haven't been clinical whatsoever, it's cost us in these games and uh, yeah, it's just really, really frustrating, it's annoying um, because if we were able to basically finish, obviously we've got Higuain, he did, like I said, miss a lot of uh, lot of easy chances but um, he did get his goal, um, hopefully he's still adapting to the Premier League, etc, so that's quite good. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And then Pedro came on in 75 minutes. I was disappointed not to see Callum hunter doy feature. I don't understand what this guy has to do to be able to feature. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, we're trying to convince this guy to sign a contract, but we're not playing him. It, it doesn't make sense. Pedro coming on in 75 minutes all the time. Pedro for Willian. Willian for Pedro. Pedro for Willian. I mean, it's always the same substitution. Really, really nice to see Ruben come on, however. Uh, really, really nice link-up player of Higuain and Hazard as well. Really, really fast, tall, uh, physical, you know, charging down. He's perfect at number eight position. He's much better than Barkley, in my opinion. And when Kovacic did come on for the tie, Georgino, you know, I thought it was fantastic. Georgino needs a rest. He's been playing, played 130 minutes against uh, Manchester City in the uh, Carabao Cup final. And he played a full night against Tottenham. The man's knackered. So he came off on the 60th minute for Kovacic. And Kovacic, for me, his best position is that register. He can't score. He hasn't scored in over two years. He doesn't really assist. Um, but his link-up play is perfect. He's very, very calm on the ball. Very composed. Uh, beats his man easily. Very, very press resistant. Controls the game. Dictates it. I think he's perfect for that. For that backup register role. So... Um, yeah, it was nice to see Kovacic get a bit of game time in a position. Obviously, Kovacic for me is perfect for that register role. And it's like I said, really, really nice to see Jorginho getting a bit of a rest. Um, and N'Golo Kante, like I said, fantastic. I don't want to hear no more of this swap, this DM bullshit, right? He's perfect there. Another 8 out of 10 for N'Golo Kante. And Aspi, I thought it was one of his better performances recently. I thought Aspi hasn't been great recently, but offensively really, really well. The assist he gave for the Higuain goal, the way he cut his man open and then slotted a really nice inch perfect cross by uh, Cesar Aspilicueta and defensively very very solid um, we're unlucky not to get the clean sheet obviously Fulham really really took us to the line they really really pressurised us but um, I thought Kepa was fantastic Kepa the way you, you know um, he saved us so many times for me like I said Kepa is man of the match he was fantastic I'm really really interested to really see what um, you, your guys opinions on Kepa you know is he um was he who was man of the match in your opinion? And um, yeah, I think it was the right decision. If we had Caballero, it could have been a completely different game, a completely different story. So I'm happy Kepa was back in position. But yeah, and regarding Hazard, I thought Hazard was really, really good. Got the assist for the Jorginho goal. And a really nice sim come off, come off as well. Because like I said, he was suffering from fatigue. He did self Tottenham game. Though. You know, he was really, really tired recently. And um, yeah, very, 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 very good performance in the uh, in the first half. In the second half, he did come off eventually for um, Pedro. And uh, yeah, William was one of his better performances. So overall, a very, very decent team performance. The first half was phenomenal. 
you know, the way we're operating those half spaces, he go on causing trouble with his movement. You can tell why Fulham are defensively atrocious. Uh, the midfield really, really doing well. Jorginho dictating the play. The fullbacks doing their proper job. The way the ball, the way they were moving the ball much more quickly down the left hand side, causing Fulham a lot of problems. Linking up the play really well. Christensen really composing the ball. Really, really good partnership at the back as well. And Kepa, in my opinion, was man of the match. Fantastic, superb. Wasn't the best of performance in the second half, but we got the job done. We got the three points, a decent performance, and we move on to our next game. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you guys for my next video. Peace.